I released a video a little while ago where we went over six things to have been deemed dementia risk factors and some simple solutions to them. Now, I'd like to cover six more. Some of them are relatively obvious and others are not at all obvious and a bit surprising, in fact. I learned a lot going through this scientific review wherein a group of researchers across the world came together to look over the current scientific landscape and write up this review wherein they aggregate all the studies. Not only that, each expert wrote a section of the review, and each section was debated and discussed by all the experts. Last time that they uh, met and put this uh, review together, they had 12 factors, and now they've kept those 12 factors but added two more that have met this criteria for dementia risk. So, what are they and the solutions? One, social isolation. Okay, there's actually a super simple test that I'll give you in a minute to find out if you meet the criteria set out by the researchers for social isolation. But the researchers point out that a person's self-assessment of loneliness defined as feeling inadequate social contact is associated with dementia risk. But the researchers took it a step further and broke up the condition based on different groupings related to social isolation. You can see that these listed on the left side. On the far right, they quantified the risk associated with that subgroup and the risk of dementia. Those numbers are also illustrated in the symbol form, with the squares and the lines slightly to the left. Essentially, if the squares and lines move to the right of the 1.00 line, there's an increased dementia risk. So, for example, studies looking at less social contact both move squarely to the right, indicating increased risk. On the other hand, smaller social network does not convincingly show increased risk. That would translate to having few friends, even if not a lot of friends, may be sufficient to mitigate risk. But having no or little social contact in general is a dementia risk. The same is true for other factors like loneliness and being unmarried, for example. That said, I should offer some cautions on overanalyzing this data. Much like my last video, these are unadjusted associations, so it's always possible that other variables that are also associating with unmarried status or loneliness could be the true reason and not the loneliness or married status itself. For example, it may not be being married specifically, but the close relationship between two people that have this true causative variable. So. Don't go running out of the courthouse thinking that once you have a marriage certificate, uh, you're protected from dementia. You know, maybe that's uh, what I should start selling instead of a supplement like many other health influencers. Here's a marriage certificate. You're safe from dementia now. Okay, what do you wanna bet there are marriage jokes percolating in the comments soon? Anyway, jokes aside, Here's a simple test to determine if you're considered based on these clinicians and researchers at risk for being a socially isolated person and therefore at a likely increased risk of dementia. Ask yourself these three questions. One, are you living alone? Two, do you see friends or family less than once per month? Three, do you not participate in weekly group activities? If you said yes on two out of three of those, this is defined as socially isolated according to the researchers. Now keep in mind that other clinicians might have different definitions. Okay, so the takeaway is that putting yourself in situations where you're engaging in group activities like uh, joining a league, a reading club, making a point to see friends and family more often when possible, this doesn't have to be extremely formal either. I mean, I have a group of friends that I play online games with and we chat throughout, so as a personal example. Two, air pollution. Yeah, this is probably not the first one that comes to mind, but it's been on a consensus list for some time now. The researchers indicate that micro and nanoparticles in the air track with dementia risk. These particles are micro and nano simply because based on size. So nanoparticles are smaller than 2.5 micrometers and they're quite prevalent in, well, the most obvious of places, cities, and heavily in areas of industry. To be fair, the researchers point out that there's a good amount of heterogeneity or difference between studies. So I think that there's a lot here that we have yet to discover. 
Also, keep in mind that I can't get into these topics with the depth that they deserve, but I'd really like to make specific content on each one of these factors and discuss the mechanisms by which they affect our health. So the takeaway here is, well, I mean, protect your airways. This one isn't easy. For one, maybe masks could help if you live in a city, especially near industrial areas, but some people get really bothered using masks. Unfortunately, some areas are essentially impossible to eliminate exposure. Just living there is a risk. Also, keep in mind the length of exposure. If you're there for a day, that's not what we're talking about here. Usually years, decades of exposure is the risk. Three, obesity. I think this one is obviously bad for our overall health, and that extends to brain health directly as well. Actually, let me come back to obesity because there's something especially interesting about this one, but it makes it more interesting once you learn some of the other risk factors first. So let's discuss the fourth factor first, cardiovascular health. This is a risk factor that I'm combining with some of the others to create the umbrella of cardiovascular health. Technically, the researchers focused on two things under this umbrella. So low density lipoprotein burden and blood pressure. Both have fascinating counterintuitive data linked to them. Let's break it down. Low density lipoprotein levels, which are these particles floating through your bloodstream that deliver cholesterol molecules and fat to your organs, are linked to dementia. The researchers quantified that for every one millimole per liter increase in LDL, there's an 8% increase in dementia risk. In some studies, cholesterol-lowering drugs reduce the risk of dementia, but in other studies, giving cholesterol-lowering dr drugs later in life did not provide that benefit. There's a number of reasons for that, some of which I explained in my previous video discussing other risk factors, like the fact that these intervention or treatments later in life may come too late. In addition, the researchers point out that high LDL or low-density lipoproteins and low HDL or high density lipoproteins is linked to dementia, yet not all studies agree on that association. The LDL association is the one that was recently upgraded from possible risk factor to probable, by the way. Then blood pressure has an interesting track record because the research is again mixed. And that might be because of an odd phenomenon that the researchers point out. To be clear, I do not have an explanation for this. So it's something that I'll need to look into, but I'm curious if you might be able to think of a reason for this. Here's the situation. Some studies indicated that elevated blood pressure is a dementia risk, while other studies disagree. However, what has been identified is that people who develop dementia that have high blood pressure, they experience a sudden drop in blood pressure about five years before dementia sets in, or is identified is a better way to say that. So high blood pressure throughout life, then a sudden drop in blood pressure for several years, then dementia diagnosis. To be clear, this isn't causative necessarily. So don't walk away from this thinking that if you try to lower your blood pressure, you'll develop dementia. That is not the takeaway here. Imagine a bunch of people suddenly adding salt to everything. Dementia ain't getting me. Now where's that pepper? <laughs> Either way, blood pressure is linked to dementia. But as you can tell, there are some patterns that need to be explained. So the takeaway here is to follow basic health advice, reducing blood LDL levels and keeping normal blood pressure that can all be achieved, usually by nutrition and physical activity. Also maintaining a normal weight for your height and even more specifically improving your body composition for that weight to be leaner. Speaking of leanness, let's return to factor three, obesity, because I was going to mention that it seems reasonable that if a person is obese, that they are at much higher risk of high blood pressure and high LDL levels. Yet the researchers mentioned that in an adjusted analysis, remember we looked at an unadjusted analysis before where the researchers are not controlling for variables that could be the real reason for the risk. In this case, the researchers are adjusting or controlling for other factors to determine if obesity is the issue, independent of these other factors. The researchers point out that after adjusting for cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and more, the dementia risk still remained. So 
That increases our confidence that obesity alone contributes uniquely to dementia risk. We also know that mild weight loss, something like 5% of body weight, leads to improved cognitive function as well. So taking all of that together, the takeaway here is pretty obvious. Even if you have a clean bill of health, there's a good chance that being overweight is still a problem. So try to lose weight in any way that is manageable for you. Okay, so we've got two more to get into with the best for last, or at least the least expected for last. In addition, I'm covering some of the factors the researchers included in their review that they said might be risk factors, but don't quite have enough evidence behind them. It's quite a list. If you're interested in learning about the possible contributors along with the likely ones that we've been covering, I'll be covering those in the extended version of this video, which can be found if you're a member of the Physionic Insiders. Oh, also, I created a template uh, that very simply assesses your risk of modifiable dementia based on a weighted scale also included with the Physionic Insiders, along with all of my other work, videos, research reviews, podcasts, and more. It's linked in the description box if you're ever so inclined to join. I'd love to have you aboard. The fifth factor is physical activity. So physical activity, as small as walking all the way up to dedicated exercise, is especially beneficial against a form of dementia called vascular dementia. Essentially problems in the blood vessels going to and from and within the brain. Physical activity reduces contributors to dementia like neuroinflammation, as well as increases blood flow and reduces blood pressure, likely through increases in the secretion of molecules that accomplish both, like nitric oxide. I don't think that this is uh, one is much of a mystery, so I needn't elaborate. But in short, if you ain't moving, your brain ain't grooving. Or in less silly English, you should be exercising if you want to reduce your dementia risk. Okay, drum roll please. The sixth factor is loss of vision. Not only is loss of vision linked to dementia retrospectively, as in looking back in people with dementia and looking for common factors, but also prospectively. When people suffer from vision loss, it is linked to cognitive impairment in general. In fact, when people get cataracts, which is a clouding of the eye, which dramatically impairs vision, there's an outsized increased risk of dementia. And get this, if a person has their cataracts resolved, they have reduced risk compared to those who don't have their cataracts corrected. So the takeaway is to keep your eye health in check. But if you're older and suffering from vision problems that could be fixable, like cataracts, there's an added reason to consider going through with the fix. That last one is especially unique. And while we covered six factors that are linked to increasing your dementia risk, I actually cover six more, including some other unusual ones in this next video right here. I'll speak with you over there.